Kevin McCarthy and I go way back. Uh, Kevin is uh, responsible for Ben Affleck being in Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I mean, look, I have a little bit to do with it because I had a friendship and a relationship with him professionally, but Ben and I hadn't spoken in years. Kevin McCarthy interviewed him in one of these things, in a, a junket setting, and brought up to him like, hey, they're making Jay and Silent Bob reboot. They call you? And we hadn't. And Ben made a point of saying like, no, they haven't called me, and I'm not busy at all. Congratulations to you guys. Thank are you. You're not, you not doing anything with the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, are you? And not that I know of. I haven't called me. Good hunting, free hunting season. Right. I want to do that. Kevin passed that on to me and was like, you know, Ben says he's not busy. And, you know, at first I was like, that's just a nice thing to say in an interview, Kevin. <laughs> Reached out to him. Turned out it was damn true, man. And it brought us back together. And Jay and Silent Bob reboot, one of the best scenes, easily the best scene in the movie, is the scene that Affleck does. That scene wouldn't exist were it not for Kevin McCarthy here. So by extension, when you watch Clerks 3 and Affleck pops up and it makes you, <laughs> gives you the warm fuzzies. Like people saw him in the trailer and they're like, oh, I'm so happy to see him there. They're just, it's nice to know they're friends. That has everything to do with Kevin right here as well. That also wouldn't have happened if Kevin hadn't done what he did uh, back on Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Let and me tell because of that, Kevin, one of my most trusted advisors and stuff, and he gets to see everything early. So him and his real bland buddies came over to my house and watched Clerks 3. So the boys watched the movie, and then right afterwards, we chit-chatted for a while. Then I took him to a better filmmaker's house, Quentin Tarantino, where they were going to do podcasts with him. And they were trying to get an Uber. It's like, oh, I know where Quentin is. I'll drop you off. So then I dropped the kids off. That's my, that's how my, well, that's how deep I go with Kevin McCarthy, kids. Having Randall go through the heart attack, you know, I, I just wonder from a, an emotional standpoint, from a cathartic standpoint, what's that like for you? What, what does it give you a view on that experience that maybe you didn't have by watching it play out on screen? Being on set in the hospital, um, which was a beautiful unused hospital uh, that they hadn't even opened yet, um, and having Amy say things that were said to me and listening to Jeff as Randall say things back to Dr. Leidenheim, um, there was a moment of sur surreality where, you know, I, I was like, all right, I got this. I killed this beast. I slayed this dragon. And the heart attack didn't own me. I own the heart attack. Yeah. But there was a moment of like, oh, wow, this did happen. You know, and that doesn't really happen when I make a, all these flicks. That was the mm. first time ever making a movie where I was like, oh, like I did take this from my real life. And just a reminder, you can catch Clerks 3 in theaters later this month. All right, will do. Lots Kevin always has a good story, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> and such a good relationship with the stars. All right.